Hey, good morning, church family, and thank you for those that are joining us online. We are so excited that you guys are here. If you are new to Yorktown or you have some questions or you have a need and you wanna be more connected to the church, we have a communication card that is in the link below that you can fill out. This way we know exactly what's going on in your life and we can come alongside you and we can work with you um, if we know exactly what you are needing. Today is gonna be a great day. Our pastor is, is starting off a new series entitled The Church Is. And some of these questions that we are facing about what the church truly does and the actions that we actually do as a church and the gathering of the church will be answered in the weeks to come. So we hope that you're excited about this new series. Also today, we're doing our music portion just a little bit different. You know, we've been getting a lot of great feedback on seeing some familiar faces and I'm doing these different projects and videos that we've done. And so we've decided to do a virtual band. And so this week, our band has worked really hard. They practiced, they prepared. And so we hope that you engage yourself during this time of worship, that it energizes you and it encourages you in your walk with Christ as we worship together. You know, through today's list of songs, we'll see the focus of our eyes being fixed upon Jesus. And when our eyes are fixed upon him, the things of this world, they will fade away. The, the hardships, the pain, um, even, even the brokenness of this world, those things will lessen if we keep our eyes and remain focused upon him. Our hope remains in him. And we see the great things that our heavenly father has done through Christ Jesus, his son, by sending him to die in our place. So I hope this encourages you. I'm gonna read a passage real quick, Psalms 92, that will tune our hearts as we have a call to worship this morning. And it says this, it is good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praises to his name, O most high, to declare your steadfast love in the morning and your faithfulness by night, to the music of the lute and the harp, to the melody of the lyre, for you, O Lord, have made me glad in your work. At the works of your hands, I sing for joy. How great are your works, O oh Lord. I hope that you can sing for joy today. Let's all join together as we worship and sing of the great things God has done. Awake and alive, 
any comfort. Jesus is better. Make my heart believe. More than all riches, Jesus is better.
Good morning, Yorktown family. Thank you for joining us here today. We're gonna to take a few moments at this time to worship God through our gifts and offerings. There are several ways in which you can give. If you're watching this via Facebook or YouTube, there's a link in the description. If you're watching it on our website, there is a link in the text below. I also want to take this opportunity to thank you for your faithfulness in giving during this time and to share with you some of the ways in which God is using your gifts and offerings here. As you know, Yorktown partners with several ministries, both locally and internationally. One of our largest and dearest ministry partners here locally is the Pregnancy Center of the Coastal Bend. Uh, every year, Yorktown Baptist Church and members of the Yorktown family support them through donations and through volunteer hours. Just this past year, the Pregnancy Center has served over 2,000 clients, individual clients, and they have saved the lives of 486 infants. They have also offered, offered parenting classes to 641 uh, parents and provided over 110,000 diapers to those in need. Another dear partner in ministry, both locally and internationally, is the South Texas Children's Home, better known as Stitch. Stitch does a lot of their international ministries in the Dominican Republic. They uh, work there with a partner church, uh, IBQ, in the uh, capital city of Santo Domingo. Now the DR has been hit pretty hard by the COVID-19 virus. The whole island is on lockdown, and unfortunately, since most Dominicans are day laborers, if they're not working, they're not eating. So Stitch and IBQ have kind of risen to the challenge and they've been putting together food baskets to go out to the families in need. Uh, Yorktown is in the process of sending down funds to help support that effort as well. So uh, as you give today and in the future, uh, a lot of your offerings will go towards ministries like that because even, like I said before, in the midst of a pandemic, uh, the kingdom of God doesn't stop. Thank you for your time. Well, good morning, Yorktown family, and thank you once again for joining in to this online worship experience. Also, we'd like to say welcome to those of you who aren't a part of the Yorktown family and watching from somewhere around the planet. We know we've had people tune in from as far away as Kuwait and Canada and obviously here in Corpus Christi, but from wherever you're watching, we're delighted and honored that you've chosen to celebrate with us. We're starting a new series of messages this morning about what the church really is. Uh, during these last several weeks where we have worshiped online only and have no on-campus ministry activities, we've confessed and agreed that this is not the ideal way uh, in which God's people are to celebrate. In fact, I've discussed with our elders and our staff and other pastors around the city about when we began to open our doors and meet again, uh, not to stream live our nine o'clock service like we've done for several years, uh, to make sure that you understand that this was not God's ideal to watch services online. This really is an exception. It, it is an option. Really, it is a blessing that God has given us uh, during this season. But also, it's for those who are unable to make a corporate worship service. So we want to make sure that you realize that when the doors are open, we long to have you here to celebrate with us. As we've communicated to you and hopefully have made clear, we, we haven't moved to online services exclusively or not had Bible studies on campus due to any fear or because we felt we were forced to. We've done so out of respect for our authorities, for the safety of our community, and as a testimony to our neighbors to make sure that they understand that we have compassion for people. Again, we're thankful for this technology. We're thankful for the team with which God has blessed Yorktown to be able to produce this online worship experience. And we're thankful for technology such as Zoom to be able to connect us to one another through this season. However, we're longing for that day to where we can gather together in person to congregate, to celebrate, and to fellowship. Uh, just this week, as I was reading through our two-year reading plan as, uh, that, as a part of the Yorktown two-year reading plan, I came across Psalm 111. And in verse 1, the psalmist talks in the present tense. But I have bracketed some words that you understand uh, this is for the future. So look at this on the screen. He said, Hallelujah. I can't wait to praise the Lord with all my heart in the assembly of the upright and in the congregation. And I hope that's true of you, that you can't wait to come together and to celebrate with your church family. 
Just because we haven't met publicly over the last few weeks doesn't mean that we have ceased being the church. I'm afraid we might be tempted to equate the church with building or facilities or some type of of studies. But as we're going to see throughout this series, the church is you. The church is people. In fact, if you notice the graphic that our media director, Daryl Mansell, made, it shows an image of the church, but embedded in there are pictures of you, the church family, because this building, again, is not the church. You are the church. Did you know 2,000 years ago when the church of Jesus Christ was birthed, they didn't have buildings. It wasn't until Emperor Constantine made Christianity the official religion of the Roman Empire that they began to erect buildings. So the question is, have we still been the church throughout these past few weeks, even though we haven't met on campus? Well, absolutely. Again, because the church is you, the church is people. But I want you to listen very carefully to this. The church is exclusively those persons who have confessed Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. The church is not people who merely attend a church. You see, the word for church in the New Testament in Scripture is the Greek word ekklesia. You'll see this on the screen. It comes from the combination of two Greek words, ek, E-K, which means out of, and a form of the word kaleo, which means called. So really, it is the called out ones. It was originally used for an assembly of people who were called together by a herald. Uh, The Church of Jesus Christ, specifically the Church of Yorktown, are people who have been called out by Christ and are meeting together. Now, that doesn't mean that we don't serve and welcome those who haven't confessed Christ. Anyone is welcome uh, to visit our worship service, our Bible studies and functions that we have. But make sure that you understand only those who confess Jesus Christ as Lord are those who are part of the church. So given the fact that the church is the people of God, what does that look like? Last November, I was privileged to be asked to give a breakout talk at the local evangelism conference of of the Southern Baptist churches in our area. And my topic that I was assigned was, I am a church member. I had remembered that Tom Rayner, who was the CEO of Lifeway Resources and also a researcher when it comes to church trends, back in 2013, he wrote a book called I Am a Church Member. So I pulled that small book out of my library and began to try to get some ideas about my topic. Although I didn't use it much, if any, uh, he talks about the tendency of us to blame a lot of of factors when it comes to church decline, numerically, financially, etc., when really we ought to take a look at ourselves. In that book, he wrote the following. Look at some of these quotes. He said, I'm proposing that we who are church members need to look in the mirror. I am suggesting that congregations across America are weak because many of us church members have lost the biblical understanding of what it means to be a part of the body of Christ. We join our churches expecting others to serve us, to feed us, and to care for us. We don't like the hypocrites in the church, but we fail to to see our own hypocrisies. He goes on to say, God did not give us local churches to become country clubs where membership means that we have privileges and perks. Many churches are weak because we have members who have turned the meaning of membership upside down. It's time to get it right. It's time to become a church member as God intended. It's time to give instead of being entitled. So what I did with that breakout session, I changed the title from I am a church member to I am an ideal church member because you and I both know that you can be a member of the church, you can be on the rolls of a church, but not manifest any of the things about which I'm sharing in the course of these three weeks. Now, although I use the title, uh, an ideal church member, I believe these three things at which we're going to look should be true of every person who calls himself a member of the church of Jesus Christ and specifically the Yorktown family. What I'd ask you to do is to see how you're lining up with some of these qualities and characteristics at which we're going to look and also how how you might begin to implement these things if you're not already. Again, we're going to look at what the Bible has to say about what the church is. So what are the people of God who identify the church supposed to be? Well, first of all, the church, which is you individually and us collectively, is to be consecrated to the Lord. 
consecrated to the Lord. Now, what do I mean when I say consecrated? Well, look at this definition on the screen. This is one of the best definitions I've found. It's the separation of oneself from things that are unclean, especially anything that would contaminate one's relationship with a perfect God. As I said earlier, only those who have confessed Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior are a part of the church. So it's one thing to confess Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. It's altogether another thing to be consecrated unto the Lord. When it comes to our faith in Christ, I want to make sure that we understand this. Uh, it's, it's not just a one-time decision, although it involves an act of the will at a moment in time to where you realize you are a sinner and in need of a Savior, and you give your heart to Christ, and you choose to follow Him. You see, salvation really is a life focused on growing in the knowledge of God and becoming more like Christ. Not only that, here's what I want us to really understand as we talk about being consecrated to the Lord. The Bible says that when you confess Christ as Lord, you are instantaneously baptized with the Holy Spirit, baptized by the Holy Spirit. Now, we might tend to think of baptism as an act where someone is immersed in water, and that is true. But when you confess Christ, you are now a vessel of the Holy Spirit. You have been baptized. The Bible says that you have been sealed for all eternity. The Bible says that the Holy Spirit is kind of a, a down payment for your ultimate redemption to heaven. Now, while there are some who believe that the baptism of the Holy Spirit is a subsequent act to salvation, the Apostle Paul says in Romans 8 that if you don't have the Spirit of Christ, if you don't have the Holy Spirit, then you don't belong to Him. So I believe that being baptized by the Holy Spirit is an instantaneous act that God does when you confess Jesus is Lord. So you, <laughs> yeah, you are now a temple of the Holy Spirit. Isn't that incredible and amazing truth? You are a temple of the Holy Spirit. This is what the Apostle Paul says in 1 Corinthians 6, 19, when he's admonishing the church at Corinth to abstain from sexual immorality, which, which is an act against one's body. He says this, don't you know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God? Uh, notice this, he says, you are not your own, for you are bought at a price. So glorify God with your body. So it, it's amazing. I mean, your body is now a, a sanctuary. The temple of the Holy Spirit resides in you. Now, sometimes we might refer to the building in which I'm now sitting is the sanctuary. But this, this is a meeting place. This is, we call this a worship center. Now, it's, it's dedicated for the purposes of God, but it's not a temple. You are a temple of the Holy Spirit. You are a sanctuary. And as such, you are to be consecrated to the Lord. Paul says in that passage in 1 Corinthians that you're no longer your own. You belong to Christ. You have been purchased at a great cost, the, the price of the blood of Jesus Christ. Therefore, you are to give glory and honor to God with your entire life. As I said earlier, being a new creation and being born again is not the end. It is just the beginning. Again, because salvation is this life. The writer of Hebrews said it's a long-distance race. In Paul's letter to the Thessalonians, uh, concerning our being consecrated, he uses the word sanctified. Look at what he, he says. Additionally then, brothers and sisters, we ask and encourage you in the Lord Jesus that as you have received instruction from us on how you should live and to please God, by the way, the pleasing God is a theme that we'll see throughout this morning's message. He says, as you are doing, do this even more, for this is God's will, your sanctification. People want to know the will of God when it comes to several things like a job or a marriage or a home or other decisions they have, to, they have to make. But why not start with what we know being the will of God, which is your sanctification? It's a process in which you grow more conformed to the image of Christ. It's being consecrated to the Lord. Getting back to the idea of being temples of the Holy Spirit, to what is the Apostle Paul referring when he uses that word temple? Well, I believe he's referring to the temple in Jerusalem that was built by King Solomon 3,000 years ago, 1,000 years prior to the writing of the Gospels and the New Testament epistles. 
The temple, that structure that was built by King Solomon, was dedicated or consecrated to the Lord for the specific purposes of worship and sacrifice. Worship and sacrifice. Remember, I want us to remember this, that everything in the Old Testament, we call it the Old Covenant, was a foreshadowing of things to come in the New Covenant, in the New Testament, from the festivals of Passover, of Pentecost, from the, the, the Feast of Tabernacles or the Festival of, of Shelters and Booths, all of the, the, the temple ceremony, it all pointed to and was fulfilled in Jesus. In other words, the Old Testament and the New Testament is one story of redemption, all fulfilled in Jesus Christ. So when the temple of the Lord was completed by Solomon, he had a prayer of dedication, after which the Bible says the glory of the Lord, the Spirit of the Lord descended upon the temple and filled it. And people were amazed and sensed the presence of God when the Holy Spirit again consumed or baptized the temple. Now the Holy Spirit... When it comes to people in the Old Covenant, people weren't baptized by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit would come and go upon particular people for a specific person, at a, on a specific person for a, a specific purpose. Uh, we see that all through the Old Covenant. It was used for either prophecy that the Spirit of God would come and speak through a person or to display God's power at a moment of time. It would say the Spirit of God would come upon an individual, but the Spirit of God would come and go. Uh, we see that in the example of King David. Remember when he sinned against God by committing adultery with Bathsheba in Psalm 51 in his prayer of repentance, he said, Oh God, he said, please don't take your Holy Spirit from me. Why would he pray that? Because it was a possibility. Again, the Holy Spirit would come and go. But now, in the New Covenant, the Holy Spirit doesn't come and go. The Bible says again that we are sealed with the Holy Spirit. And we as temples are to be consecrated, set apart for the purposes and the glory of God, to worship God and to offer spiritual sacrifices about which we'll refer in a, in a moment or to which we'll refer. Um, the, let's go back to the Old Testament temple. Throughout the history of the temple of Jerusalem, God's people would neglect the temple. They would, they would abuse the temple. You remember when Jesus came into the temple, there was one occasion that he overturned the money changers' tables because he understood they were abusing the purpose for the temple or of the temple. But God's people throughout the history of the temple, they would neglect the, the temple to the point to where when we get to the scripture about, at which we're going to look, they had actually closed the doors of the temple. I mean, this one structure that represented the, the presence of God among them, they had closed the doors. Can you imagine that? The center of worship and sacrifice being closed. But then a man by the name of Hezekiah became king of the southern kingdom of Judah, uh, which Jerusalem was the capital and the temple was in Jerusalem. And he took it upon himself to reopen of the temple. He had some temple reforms. So look at what we read in 2 Chronicles 29, beginning in verse 3. In the first year of Hezekiah's reign, in the first month, he opened the doors of the Lord's temple and repaired them. Then he brought in the priests and Levites and gathered them in the eastern public square. He said to them, hear me, Levites. They were the ones who were responsible for the temple. He said, consecrate yourselves now and consecrate the temple of the Lord, the God of your ancestors. Remove everything impure from the holy place. So that's what it means to consecrate, is to remove everything impure and to use it for the purpose for which it was created. So as temples of the Holy Spirit, we are to be consecrated for the purposes of God. But I want us to look and how being consecrated is manifested. First of all, it's manifested privately or personally, individually. This is when you, as a member of the church of Jesus Christ, consecrate yourself to God. Now, you may think that that word consecrated is reserved for some super saint or for those who may get serious about uh, their faith, but we've seen that God's will for every one of you who claims to know Christ is to be consecrated, is to be sanctified, and to grow into the likeness of Christ. The Apostle John wrote the following in 1 John chapter 2. This is how we know that we are in Christ. The one who says he remains in him should walk just as Jesus walked. 
The Apostle Paul writes in Ephesians 4.1, after explaining who we are and what we have in Christ, he says, Therefore I, the prisoner in the Lord, urge you to walk worthy of the calling. There's that word kaleo. Again, the called out ones. Walk worthy of the calling you have received. Now let me just say, very lovingly yet boldly, and you probably are used to that by now, but if you have no desire to be consecrated, to the Lord and are not showing any signs of being transformed more into the image of Christ, Christ, you might ask yourself if you've really ever met the God of the universe, if you've ever experienced God, if you've ever stepped across the line of faith and confessed Him as Lord and Savior, because the Bible says that there are signs that we can see that make sure that we are identified with Christ. So how do you consecrate yourself? Just as they did in the temple, you began to rid yourself of all those things that are contrary to God. The Apostle Paul put it this way. Again, there's a lot of scriptures that we could use, but one scripture, again, this is a couple of verses that every follower of Christ should memorize. It's Romans 12, verses 1 and 2. It says, Therefore, brothers and sisters, in view of the mercies of God, I urge you to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is true worship. Do not be conformed to this age or to this world, to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you may discern what is the good, pleasing, and perfect will of God. Now, now there's a whole lot wrapped up in those two verses. Again, sermons, uh, entire sermons have been preached on those two verses. But I want us to remember that when he talks about a living sacrifice, that the animal sacrifices in the Old Covenant, they had to be pure sacrifices. They couldn't be uh, the animals. They couldn't be, they could have any spots. They couldn't have any blemishes. They couldn't have any broken bones. These were the ones that were acceptable to God and were pleasing to him. That is why it is imperative, by the way, that the once and for all sacrifice, Jesus, had to be sinless, had to be perfect. But we're no longer to offer blood sacrifices. That sacrifice, again, has been paid once and for all at Calvary. Our lives, our very lives, are to be living sacrifices. It seems like an oxymoron, a, 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 a contradiction that how can you be a living sacrifice? It means that we're, we're dying to ourselves and living to God. Uh, and again, a sacrifice, our living sacrifice is to be holy, is to be consecrated into the Lord. Again, this is what pleases God. It doesn't mean that we're perfect. It means that we're setting ourselves apart from the world's passions and pursuing a holy lifestyle through the disciplines of the faith. Again, the Apostle Paul said, this is really worship. Again, we tend to equate worship with music or a gathering together. But he said, you want to know what true worship is like? Offering yourself as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. And then he says also in, in the Romans 12 passage that we're not to be conformed to the ways of this world, but be transformed to be transformed by the renewing of our mind. And how do you do that? How do you renew your mind? Well, you, you begin to read the Word of God, to saturate yourself with the things of God and not the things of this world. And you meet with God in prayer. The Holy Spirit reveals to you things that you are to change. The Apostle Paul said that everything that we do ought to bring honor and glory to God. And you may be asking what this looks like. You know, I've thought about this a number of times, and I was sharing with a group of men that I'm mentoring one time several months ago, how, how, do, you, how do you know how to consecrate yourself? Well, I think a good measure of what is acceptable to God, what is pleasing to God as a temple of the Holy Spirit is to ask yourself if the movie or the TV show that you're watching is okay to put up on the screen here in this worship center and to watch it as a church family. And you say, well, I would never defile uh, the sanctuary like that. Well, again, this is not the sanctuary. This is not the temple of the Lord. You are the temple of the Lord, which is to be consecrated unto Him. So if anything, it, and if something is not good enough to show or to watch or to do or to say in this building, what makes you think it'd be all right for you to do, watch, and say, and think all those things as a temple of the Holy Spirit? Look at the following quote that speaks to all this. 
As true believers in Christ, the act of consecration involves our lives being a living sacrifice to Him. We are totally separated from the defilement of the world. Each day, we are to live out our lives as a holy and royal priesthood to the glory of God, for we are now God's people. So, the church, which is God's people, have confessed Jesus as Lord and Savior. They're to be consecrated to the Lord, which manifests itself personally, individually. But secondly, being consecrated also manifests itself publicly or corporately. When I say publicly, I mean as the Yorktown body, as the church of Jesus Christ meeting publicly or corporately in this worship center. When we gather together publicly, corporately, there should be a distinct difference in our meetings from other meetings around town, uh, such as a homeowners association or the Rotary Club, the Lions Club, the, the, the Kiwanis Club. Why? Because we are individually consecrated to the Lord. It manifests itself in our public gatherings. There should be a palpable sense of the presence of God that is unique. Let's get back to our story in Second Chronicles. Concerning the temple in Jerusalem, look at what King Hezekiah said that God's people had become because they were neglecting the temple. And I want to again parallel that to us individually and corporately as the church. In verses 6 through 8, he said, For our ancestors were unfaithful. They did what was evil in the sight of the Lord our God. They abandoned Him, turned their faces away from the Lord's dwelling place, the temple, and turned their backs on Him. They also closed the doors of the portico. And notice this, they extinguished the lamps, did not burn incense, and did not offer burnt offerings in the holy place of the God of Israel. Therefore, the wrath, the judgment of the Lord was on Judah and Jerusalem, and He made them an object of terror, horror, and mockery, as you see with your own eyes. Remember when I said earlier that everything in the Old Covenant was a a foreshadowing of the things in the New Covenant? Look at the things that are mentioned just in those uh, three verses. When it comes to extinguishing the lamps in the temple, that's a picture of us grieving or quenching the activity of the Holy Spirit. We know from the book of of Revelation that the lampstand that was to be removed from the churches in Revelation 2 and 3 was the removal of the Holy Spirit. Burning incense in the temple is a picture of our prayers ascending to God. We also know this from the, the book of Revelation where John says that the golden bowls of incense were the prayers of the saints. Now, can you imagine your prayers ascending to heaven as incense? And then it says offering burnt offerings. Uh, this is a picture of us offering the spiritual sacrifices about which I mentioned earlier, such as, look at these, the sacrifice of praise. The writer of Hebrews says, let us continually then offer up a sacrifice of praise, which is the fruit of our lips. What about the sacrifice of doing good and sharing with, with others? Uh, the writer of Hebrews said, this is, this is good and it's pleasing to God. Again, the sacrifice of our lives in Romans 12.1. Now, because God's people were not doing those things, God's judgment came upon them to where they became an object of terror, horror, and mockery. In other words, they became a has-been. They became a laughingstock to everyone around them. They had closed the doors of the temple. Eugene Peterson, in the message, he paraphrases this passage like this. He said, they became a public exhibit of disaster, a moral history lesson. Is that what we want as the Yorktown family? Even as the Church of Jesus Christ in America, specifically Yorktown, do we want to become a has-been? Do we want to become a moral history lesson because of our neglect of our own temple individually to fail to consecrate ourselves unto the Lord? Or do we see ourselves in the years to come as God's people who have consecrated themselves privately in a way that manifests itself publicly to where people just sense the presence of God among us. There's a great passage in Exodus where God is explaining to Moses, because Moses is asking God as they're making their way through the wilderness, he said, well, who's going to lead us? God said, I'm going to lead you. And then Moses responds like this, I love this. He said that Moses said, well, if you don't personally go with us, don't make us leave this place. How will anyone know that you look favorably on me, on me and on your people, if you don't go with us? For your presence among us, I've got chill bumps as I read this. He said, for your presence among us sets your people and me apart from all of the other people on the earth. Why? They're consecrated unto the Lord. 
That's what sets us apart from everyone else. The God of the universe inhabits us individually. There's another passage in the book of Zechariah, a prophet, where the context is God's people returning to Jerusalem after exile in Babylon. That's the Uh, The book of Daniel, we talked about God's people being in exile, and now they're getting to return to Jerusalem, and they're going to rebuild the temple. And look at what we read. Uh, the, The Lord of armies says this, In those days, ten men from nations of every language will grab the robe of a Jewish man tightly, and they will urge, Let us go with you, for we have heard that God is with you. I mean, doesn't that light you up? Can't you imagine us coming out of this pandemic and begin to to meet together that there are people who just long to want to be a part of what God is doing here because they understand that God is with us because, again, we've consecrated ourselves unto the Lord. Again, they're saying we want to go with you because we know that God is with you. But not only will others sense God's presence with us as we consecrate ourselves individually and corporately, we will then see God's power manifested. Don't you long to see that, God's power? I think of when the children of Israel were on the brink of entering the promised land. They needed to cross the Jordan River, which at this point in history was at flood stage. Now, scholars say it could have been um, tens of uh, you know, yards wide, but it was overflowing uh, the banks. It was very difficult to move uh, several hundred thousands of people across this river into the land of promise. So they needed God to do something. And so God performed a miracle by when actually the people stepped out or the the priest or those carrying the Ark of the Covenant stepped out in faith. But before that, Joshua went through the camp and here's what he told the people. Joshua chapter 3 verse 5. He said, consecrate yourselves for tomorrow or the Lord will do wonders or miracles among you tomorrow, which was again drying up the Jordan River where they they could cross. This wonder that God showed them was predicated on them consecrating or purifying themselves. I believe with all my heart that God is just waiting to pour out His power on a group of people who were yielded and surrendered and consecrated to Him. Don't you long to see that? I mean, don't you want to be used mightily of God as you consecrate yourself? One of my favorite passages to which I've referred in my 11 and a half years here is the the Apostle Paul, when he writes to Timothy about being used by God, he says this, Now in a large house, there are not only gold and silver vessels, but also those of wood and clay, common ordinary vessels, some for honorable use and some for dishonorable use. So if anyone purifies himself, consecrates himself from anything which is impure or uh, uh, dishonorable, he will be a special instrument. That's right, you will be a special instrument set apart, useful to the master, and prepared for every good work that God wants to do in you. Oh, church, come on, why not take this time to consecrate ourselves? Because I believe, again, the Lord wants to do wonders among us. During this COVID-19 pandemic, have you found yourself washing your hands more? Maybe found yourself wearing a mask, maybe distancing yourself from people that you, you th- thought might uh, contaminate you. Why, why, why wouldn't we do that when it comes to our temples, our bodies being a temple of the Holy Spirit? Come to God with clean hands and a pure heart, as the psalmist said, taking measures not to breathe in the pollution of the way of this world that wages war against our souls, distancing ourselves from places and people we know could affect us negatively when it comes to our spiritual life. I've heard from many of you that you've taken this time to do some house cleaning, to go into some of those rooms or areas in your house where you've had this extra time. You thought, uh, we're going to clean up and we're going to prepare for this next season when we go back to work or our kids go back to school. Why, Why not take this time right now to clean out your spiritual house? your temple, your your sanctuary. As I've said all along, I believe this is a great time uh, for God to to purge us, to prune us, to purify us, and to be ready for this next season. You know, back last fall when I preached about this next frontier, (laughs) oh, I had no idea what this next frontier would look like. But let's redeem this opportunity to consecrate ourselves, prepare ourselves for what God has in the coming weeks, the months, and years. Let's set ourselves apart 
from those who don't know Christ by consecrating ourselves privately and manifesting itself both publicly and powerfully. In a moment, we're going to respond to what God may be doing in your soul, in your heart, and in your mind. And I hope God is stirring you up. I hope God is awakening you to the fact that you need to be a part of the church of Jesus Christ. And as a part of that, to be consecrated and set apart to the Lord. Uh, we're going to sing a song in a moment. It's, it's an old song, but it says, Holiness Holiness is what I long for. Holiness is what you need, God. And holiness is what you want, God, from me. And I hope, I really hope that is your prayer. Adam, our worship pastor, has asked me to lead out, to go to the piano in a moment. So that's what I'm going to do. Going to get up and go to the piano. And uh, we're going to lead you through that song as a prayer of confession, of being a longing to be consecrated. But before we do, can I pray for us? God, I thank you again for this technology and the privilege to come into people's homes or offices or cars or from wherever they're watching or listening to this. And we pray, God, that you would continue to stir our hearts to want to be consecrated and holy to you, to be set apart from the world, to be a testimony of your grace and your mercy and your power and your character. So God, I pray for repentant hearts. I pray for a change of lifestyle, that we as the Yorktown family could be that great representation of you to this city. And we pray this in Christ's name. Amen. Holiness, holiness is what I long for. Holiness is what I need. Holiness, holiness is what you want from me. So take my heart and form it. Take my mind, transform it. Take what I long for. Holiness is what I need. Holiness, oh holiness is what you want from me. So take Again, thank you for watching this morning or at any other time that you watch this. If you go to our website, yorktown.cc, you'll find some discussion questions that you can either talk amongst uh, with whom you're watching or you can process those individually. Remember last week that I asked you if you would to, to email me, jeff at yorktown.cc, and let me know of any ways that we could pray for you, any decision that you had uh, with which we could follow up, and you did. And so I'm so grateful, we're so grateful to know what God is doing in your life, God is doing in your spirit. So feel free again to email me and let us know what's going on in your world. 
uh, as we close our service out, one of our elders, Wayne Miller, is going to lead us in prayer. Again, God bless you and thank you for being a part of this online worship experience. So let us pray together to close the sermon out today. Lord, we thank you for how you've spoken to us and we've listened to your spoken word and we've heard what you had to say and it's time to consecrate ourselves. Take good use of the time when we're socially bound to the house and, and we're not running around town like we normally do. So Father, help us to take a look at those things around the house that are absolutely not needed that we can do without. It's time to go through a house cleaning. It's springtime, it's spring cleaning time, and it's time for us to refresh ourselves, to uh, lean on you in every way we can and know that it's time for us to uh, consecrate ourselves to you, become more like you, to use you in our lives every day, each step of the way, each time we walk, each time we talk, each time we think. Help us consecrate ourselves to you so we uh, can be more like you. Lord, we thank you for that. We thank you for how you lead us. We thank you for how our church has been able to uh, minister to our community through the videos and through the online services that we have. We're grateful. Thank you for that, Lord. It's your name we pray. Amen. And thank you for joining us this morning at Yorktown Baptist Church for our 9 a.m. worship service. Tune in next week when we will have another service at the same time. Also, check Friday morning. We'll have an update video that'll allow you to know what's going on at Yorktown throughout the week. We look forward to seeing you. Have a good lunch.